I never lose, either I win or I learn Those are my only options, to whomever it may concern About to be a hot topic, play with fire you get burned Ain't nobody give me nothing, whatever I got better I earn I never lose but I learn, learn I either win or I learn, learn Those are my only options, to whomever We learned the hard way We fucked up We're not perfect But the lessons we learn in life they make us who we are, and here we are, starting fresh. And we're really excited to share our journey going forward with all of you so that we can hold each other accountable through the weight loss journey. Our journey started back in March of 2020. Actually, if you've listened to our podcast, it actually started well before then. We've been you know, on this weight loss journey pretty much our entire life, but this particular journey or part of our journey started in March of 2020, where together we lost over 150 pounds. But then life hit big time in 2021. Injuries, depression, deciding to sell our home because we needed new space, downsizing with five people and two dogs and a two bedroom house. And all this stuff started to add up where our whole regimen and routine got out of whack where we were eating trash. Yeah. And so it really affected our mental state, our physical state. Those of you who've been following along on this journey, I know you can see a difference when you look at us, when you see this on YouTube. And that's why we've started this, our journey. That's what we're calling this, our journey, because it's not just us, it's all of us together. And so we have a whole new page on veganstrongandfit.com called Our Journey, where we're going to be talking about every week something that has led us to success or maybe failure that we've learned from within the week to overcome and help us to continue on this, how we're going to do this the right way this time to make sure that we're able to support you, you're able to support us and be sure to go on and follow us every week at veganstrongandfit.com slash journey. We're in this together. We don't normally do these pre-intro intros, but I thought it was really important for this episode because as you know, we work from home, our recording studio is at home, and sometimes it gets a little hectic in here while we're trying to record. Most definitely. We do have three kids, and we generally do our interviews and our podcast episode recordings after they've gone to bed. Um, but, you know, sometimes, especially the younger ones, they want to pop right back up. And in this episode, it just so happened that, like, right in the middle of the interview, our four-year-old popped up, and he was wanting us, wanting some attention. And so Yuri had to step out for a few minutes to go um, get him settled back into bed. And generally, we would just edit these kind of clips out, but there was so much good information that we talked about here, or I talked about here with Dr. Tao while Yuri was getting Camden settled back in. And so we didn't really want to edit this part out, but did kind of think it would be a little odd if we just <laughs> heard that without some kind of intro explaining. So just wanted to let you know that in the middle, it may seem a little off. But there's some really, really good information there that we talk about. And so I just didn't want to pull all of that out. Just roll with it. Just keep listening. Or if you're on YouTube, just keep watching. You don't want to miss out. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Strong AF Podcast. I'm Ashley. And I'm Yuri. And tonight we have on a very special guest. We Hello. have Dr. Tal Kamisi McQuelly. Did I say that right? You get the first two right. Uh, the last <laughs> name is like it's like Imquelli. Imquelli. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great. I, I've been trying all night, so I've been trying to get on oh, that. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Yeah, just, yeah. The M is kind of like internal almost. So yeah, but uh, you did great, now. Thank you. <laughs> so Dr. Tao is a certified holistic practitioner who's primarily an autodidact, but also licensed as a neuropath holistic practitioner. Back in March of 2018, under the world-renowned Dr. Layla Olayla Africa in Indiana and in Indianapolis. Dr. Tao lectures on subjects such as African health, medical astrology, metaphysics, ancient African history, 
plant science, history of religion, comedic science, mathematics, biology, African folklore, and many, many other areas around the US. He's also very savvy in the kitchen with an extensive raw food menu that he caters to his clients to serve healthy and tasty dishes. And he serves many clients with a variety of health challenges. And he himself was able to reverse his self of eczema by his own studies made practical. He's labeled as a polymath and very informed person or walking encyclopedia by many. But he describes himself as an easygoing person who likes to be a student just as much as he likes to teach. And Dr. Tao has decided to share his passion of health and healing to the world. So welcome to our podcast and we're really glad to have you on. Appreciate that, thank you. <laughs> All those things, I was sitting here as she was listening, medical astrology, this and that, I was like, wow, that's, that's like a lifetime of accomplishments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's, they all tie together kind of really. Mm -hmm. Once you learn one, just basically, if you, if you do one thing correctly, you do all things correctly. So the, one, the way you do one thing is how you perceive everything. So um, I just take that same mentality carry to each, you know, field. So, but, um, you know, it's really just my background. I'm, my father was a mathematician, electrical engineer. My mother, uh, early childhood development uh, teacher. So. I grew up in a very academic household. Even though I'm just as physical as, as I am mental, people think I'm just some bookworm, but I ran track, you know, I play all types of sports, baseball. So, so uh, I try to be as well rounded as possible. Now I'm the youngest child, so I kind of got to tweak a few little things just by <laughs> seeing, you know, now. So, but uh, but it's, been, it's been good, you know, just uh, I try to make sure I study daily. Every day I try I try to read something that I, I don't know something kind of stretch the the mind a little bit you know it's like a basically like a muscle basically so I work out the body and the spirit and the, and the mind every day so uh, that's kind of how I kind of acquire those different fields of uh, study so so what kind of drove you to this path because those are they sound like very specific areas of expertise. So what kind of uh, passion drove you there? Well, just being curious about the inner workings of things. Uh, I was a student in class. Well, I, I, I guess I would say I was more so concerned why as opposed to what and mm -hmm. how necessarily so. Uh, if I was in physical science class and they told me if I if I wanted to know why grass is green, then them saying chlorophyll was not sufficient answer for me. You see what I'm saying? Because that tells you that it's green because of chlorophyll, but it's not giving me why. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I had to look at that and say, okay, well, I know I, I know Roy B of the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and I see that green's in the middle, you see. So I see that red be closer to the white and the violet be closer to the black. So the green being in the middle means that it would neither absorb or reflect too much light. So therefore it would stay uh, in its proper homeostasis where it would not become burned by the sun or nutrient deficient. And that's why it would be green. So green will make sense. You see what I'm saying? Then chlorophyll can be good to explain it afterwards. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. wow. just kind of tracking, you know, tracking information. So um, just very dissatisfied with just, uh, I guess, standard or traditional education. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. One of the things we struggle with as a parent, especially of like young kids, is when they're always asking why. And first, you know, the initial parent response is just like, because, just because, but I don't want our children to grow up and, and not want to question things and understand. And so I think this is a great example of that because by questioning why, I mean, look how far you've come. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, like, I, like I, people, people say I'm a teacher, but really, as I say, I learn more from people because sometimes, they, I mean, many times they ask really good questions, so I have to kind of know pause and think about it and it helps sharpen you know your answer so and it's not even about giving the answers about provoking thought 
you know, whereas education education today is more cool about putting something in you where really the word educate means to, you know, draw out. So um, I'm more so about allowing people to be, become the captain of their own ship. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily need a follower per se, you see what I'm saying? Uh, if you follow me, it's more so me trying to direct you to be your own teacher or master teacher. So we say teachers create followers, but master teachers create other master teachers. So I don't create other followers necessarily. Um, so I'll give out information, but I'm always trying to provoke, uh, you know, the people to, uh, you know, think about what they're asking and be very critical thinking. You know, it's very important to become critical in how we analyze the, the natural world. <clears throat> the natural world is science. Science, the natural world is science and art expressed. So everything you see in the world right now, it's true scientific in art form. And we, we as man can just tweak it and do things. Mm -hmm. you know, but science is expressed right now. Intel intelligence is expressed right now, not necessarily on, on an IQ test. It's expressed in real time, you see. So you use ways of measuring it, but it's always going to be a fragmentation of, a, of the person. Yeah, most definitely. I, I think you brought up a really good um, point there too about critical thinking and, and really provoking others to be critical thinkers because um, I think that's one thing that the education system lacks. really lacks. Um, we're, mm -hmm. we're taught to do X, Y, Z um, because that's the assignment and that's all there is to it. But we really need to encourage the students and, and kids to be able to think critically and make decisions for themselves so that when they get out into the real world, they're not just kind of following the pack. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's amazing how we're all so different, but yet we overlook these differences. Yeah. You see, you are different because you are different, mm -hmm. but yet they made make everyone, you know, a battery, I guess they would say, you know. Um, these differences can make you unique it makes you who you are instead of just like you said a follower where you question certain things because I know me for example I'm the type of person if you tell me go left and already in my mind I'm like but I want to go right now just because you told me to go left why, why should I go left there may be something around this right corner that, that may be perfect for me or, or I could be wrong. There could be a cliff over here or something, but I've always been one to not follow suit. I've always wanted to adventure on my own and see what see what's around the corner. Exactly. It's like the person who gives you choices actually doesn't give you choices because they're giving you choices. <laughs> you know, but they've already set the, you know, the parameter of thought for you. And that's mm -hmm. what society creates. The, the, the two poles of feminine and masculine, and they use that, and they call that pros and cons, which is really a parameter of thinking. In some languages, you know, they don't even have nouns and verbs, so they think totally different. The way they structure sentences and thoughts is going to be leveraged differently than the way we think so. We, talk, we call it vocal. Vocal is meaning that you're speaking, and we call it subvocal. Subvocal means that you're thinking it. So even though you're thinking it, you're still vocalizing it, it's not audible, mm -hmm. you see. So uh, we want to tweak the sub-vocal of the person so that it helps them to, you know, become a captain of their own ship and to understand the why behind why something's given to them. So uh, once you can break those parameters, then you can kind of enter, you know, the depth of human thought because like I said, human thought is going to be given to you in school with these parameters, but it, it, it goes beyond that. Yeah, exactly. We have to be able to kind of break out of that um, ABC choices that were given. Hold on one second. I'm so sorry. My kids were asleep and some, uh, for some reason they're up. Okay. I'll be right back. You go. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's real life right now. So yeah, awesome. I'm telling you. 
they they do good until we got something going on and then they know they're ready to be up yeah well i, I actually uh came i'm in a restaurant for that very reason because it's allowed to have some oh, kind yeah. of house <laughs> 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 so just, I, just, I understand though. <laughs> do you have any kids? I have a daughter. You do? Okay. How old? She's one. Wow. She'll be two this month. Oh, that's awesome. She's on the 23rd of December. Nice. We have uh, two December birthdays. One is on the 14th and the other is the 31st. Oh, okay. A busy month. Sagittarius and Capricorn. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. You're my wife, the Capricorn. Oh, nice. So, yeah, there's a lot of Capricorn energy around me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful sign, though. I, I appreciate the energy. Yeah. yeah. The good, they're great, they're great people. Good workers, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our son that's but, um, up right now, he's a Taurus, and he definitely shows his sign. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those go see those go see if I get if I get started on that, then I go and do a whole nother like you know, <laughs> mythology story, which pretty like I like that. I like that subject a lot. Yeah. Because uh, even the um, even the uh, zodiac signs are you can actually study your sign from the Greek gods and goddesses as well, yeah. you know, or you can go into ancient comedic uh, gods and gods stuff. Tars would be uh, Hestia, yeah, Cancer would be Artemis. That's me. Please. Oh, really? Cancer? Yeah. Okay, so cancer. Artemis. So, yeah, you can actually study Artemis and you'll get more insight onto your sign. So, a lot of information on that. That's so, awesome. yeah, each one. Yeah, like Aquarius, it would be like Prometheus, Scorpio is Hades, as you know, the underworld guys. So a lot of the, uh, there's a lot of ways to study your, your, your sign, just not, just typing in, you know. Yeah. You can type in, you know, the scarab beetle, or Kepra. Kepra was what we call in uh, ancient uh, Egypt. So Kepra is the scarab beetle, which, that's why Cancer has two different, it has the crab and the scarab beetle. So the scarab beetle is the one who turns night into day. So the, what they call a dung beetle, it makes a perfect sphere. So that sphere represents the sun itself. So the sun is being rolled up and then going back under the ground. So that's why it turns night to day. And that's the story of Kepra, which represents the sign of Cancer. Oh, that's awesome. I never, I had no idea. I miss some good. Yeah. Oh, uh, we were we were totally getting into astrology and the signs. <laughs> I, and um, if you don't mind, I think that'd actually be a great place to pick up. I'll edit this out, obviously. <laughs> but, <clears throat> it's all good. Yeah. But um, yeah, the astrology, you know, it goes uh, astrology. Uh, astro means uh, guy. Logos mean word. So astrology actually literally means the word of God. So it's a way of communicating. The, uh, before they used to call, um, they used to put an A in front of the word stars. They used to call it a stars. And we know in Latin and English, we put the prefix dis, D I S, in, to mean without. So we would say, if you're without your stars, your life would be a disaster. Wow. Okay. You understand that the stars are, we are essentially. Uh, stars we configure it and we even use it in our vernacular today we say this person is a young person we may call them a young star or a youngster or a mini a minister in church is a mini star or a passing star is a pastor you see so we use it in our in our words you may not catch it you see but in ancient Kemetic or ancient Egyptian uh, times uh, the god the goddess Aset who they call uh, Isis today um, they use ah, so they, they didn't use too many uh, vowels. They, they may use the vowel at the beginning, but they didn't use too many. They spell ah, a s t, or aset. So they use the same word. So they they call them astronaut, or astrology. See? So the ah mm -hmm. means so so still catch it in it if you see it the way it is. But um, like I said, when I was taught these things, so we don't really see the etymology of it because. To understand etymology, you have to understand culture. 
understand culture, you have to understand who you are, where you come from, and your connections. You know, so but they all kind of tie together. So, like I was saying, if you want to study from a Greek Greek perspective, um, we have Aquarius is Prometheus. They had a mo whole movie called Prometheus, who's the engineer. Well, Prometheus had a uh, well, pro means before, and Metheus means thinker. So he actually had a dumber brother named Epimetheus. Epi means after, Metheus means thinker. So it means the one who reacts or the one who thinks after is the one who's considered unintelligent. And the one who thinks before something happens or who is proactive is the one who's intelligent. Um, so Prometheus is the one, you know, so far from Zeus and uh, by tricking them. That's where you get the Olympic Games from when they have this torture fire going around. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, Zeus found out and got upset and tied him to a rock. And that's when Hades came in on the earth as a form of the eagle. Remember, Scorpio has three different signs. You can turn mm -hmm. into a scorpion, an eagle, and a phoenix. So it came onto the earth as an eagle, which is the American animal, American bird, you see. And then he came, he, he started pecking at Prometheus' liver every day. And that's where you get the phrase, where y'all was picking on me from. So uh -oh. that's where that phrase comes from. So the whole story is just really uh, between Prometheus and Zeus, which what they don't really tell you is that. Well, you know that Leo is Zeus and Prometheus is Aquarius, so they're 180 degrees apart in the zodiac. So what that represents is there are two sides of the same coin, you see, because the coin has the other faces 180 degrees. So what that represents is that Zeus actually stole fire from himself, you see. So in other words, you cannot be trusted with yourself. Mm -hmm. So society has to come in to govern the mental, the government, right. the government. You see, so when you go into a court of law, you have the plaintiffs and defendants. So you have Zeus and Prometheus, and then you have the judge, which is blackness, which is black robe, which goes into Capricorn, which is the, the judge. You see, which represents Saturn. So the judge represents Saturn energy, and since you can't. Think for yourself, you have to hire an attorney, you're a minor in thinking. So minority doesn't mean minor in demographics, it means minor in thinking. So we call you a minority. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's how they sell products today. They put you into an infantile mindset. They put car like cartoon characters on cereal boxes to keep you in that. They can they can appeal to your adult mind, your mm -hmm. mature right. mind. They have to put you back into that. That childish way of thinking, you know, and this is how they market product. Uh, you know, all the colors they put together. These are PhDs putting stuff together, so they know exactly what they're doing. So, uh, but yeah, once you understand the story of Zeus and Prometheus, you really kind of understand the rest of the, the pantheon of gods and how society plays out. So, uh, so they may change the terminology. They may say the female principle that. They call it um, past. You get the word uh, homeopathic or allopathic mm -hmm. or naturopathic. Past means um, nurture. Mm -hmm. you know and then you have logos, which is the man, which is represents logos means logic. You see. Uh, so and then you have the top of that. So this is like what they call the holy trinity. The top of that would be ethos, which is the ethics of a society. Mm -hmm. So what that represents is they nurture your ignorance, which is pathos in society, and they protect it with logos or the gun, you see, which pays to its ethics or government. So society or education literally nurtures your ignorance and protects it. You see? Yeah. And it's supposed to pay homage to it, pay, pay homage to the government to keep you in the box of thinking. So once you understand culture, you understand that is all way of controlling, you know, a subject, people. And you are a person. So a person means a percentage of the sun, a per sun. So that means you're a unique individual. That's why they had movies like the Clockwork, uh, Clockwork Orange, which is the oxymoron, which mm -hmm. represents clockwork, represents something that's technical. Mm -hmm. And the orange citrus, 
which is something very unique. So we're all clockwork oranges, you see, but we learn to be more clockwork as we get older and less yeah. orange like. Oh my goodness, let me tell you, my mind is just blown right now about all of this information. I'm just like sitting here soaking it all in. Yeah, I'm just like, teach me more, <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> so I, I'm really curious, like after reading your bio and, and hearing this story, how does the medical astrology work? Okay, so it's a way of, there's many ways to diagnose, diagnose or well, technically, we said there's no true diagnosis. So what we do is a composite score. Uh, any machine, anything that tells you that they can just diagnose you with one machine, that's not true. Uh, but to be understood is uh, uh, something that can, the, for something to be able to diagnose you, the technology that diagnoses you must be equal or greater in technology than what you are. So since, since nothing ex exceeds the human body in technology, then no machine can actually technically, truly, accurately diagnose you. So we have to use ancient modalities. So medical astrology allows you to understand that uh, each part of the body represents the 12 uh, angles. And these angles you call uh, body parts or whatever you want to break them into. So we would say Aries is the head and then it goes from Aries, always to Pisces. So Pisces would be the feet. In Spanish, you would say Apai means the walk or the feet. You see, so Pisces represents the feet, the two fish. You know, so you have two feet. So um, so they would say in, in religious texts, they would say from alpha to omega or the beginning to end. So in biology, they changed the word. Remember, it's all changed the nomenclature. They do a saliva test and a urine test, which is the beginning. And you see, right. and from those numbers, those numbers create a picture. You see, what I'm saying, yeah, describe, describe someone's, you know, pan size, shirt size. You give them the numbers, and that number creates a picture. So yeah. you say someone's pH is six point five, their leukocytes are a third number, and you see, so we can see what's going on inside the body from the picture that's being created from the numbers. So medical astrology is no different. So we can go into someone's birthday, we can see what time of day they was born. The time of the day he was born, the sun and the moon create a certain angle. That angle is penetrated onto the earth plane, and the body, the first breath is going to absorb that energy, which is going to calibrate all the organs. Now, we have to understand that you and your mother's womb for 12 months in ancient times, you got shortened to 11, then it got shortened to 10, and it's like almost like nine and some change now. So, what happens is when you perish, when you go back to the earth, we notice that the body has these 12 different cell salts, which they call 12 disciples. So this number 12 is going to show up a lot in the body because it's the whole number. As a matter of fact, in ancient, uh, ancient African societies, you became a man or a woman at age 12. That's your, what they call your rites of passage age. You see. So when your grandma get mad at you, she may call you a no count, meaning that you don't count in the community because she was upset. Mm -hmm. So you're, everyone's supposed to count. You see. Um, so the worst thing in African society is not physical death, it's social castration, to be socially exiled. It's the worst thing for African society. But anyway, so we have, the, um, we have in, in this medical astrology, you'll see that the, the head is Aries, and then you have the throat, which is Taurus. So Taurus just tend to get, you know, hoarse or they have like raspy voice, stuff like that. And you'll see the type of illnesses that they tend to, uh, kind of fall into so when you miss so you're in your mother's room for about nine months now so you miss three cell salts and those cell salts would correspond to certain parts of the body organs and things of that sort so what happens is every sign is prone to certain illness that's because, so interesting uh, sorry to cut you off but i'm so curious about this right now because you said taurus is the throat and mm -hmm. our son who is a taurus has asthma and has exactly. had a lot of wheezing issues and, and respiratory issues since he was born. Exactly. So those are the cell salts he's missing. So you're missing. So what happens is you're going to miss whatever sign you are plus the two after. Mm -hmm. So if, if he's a Taurus, he's going to miss Taurus cell salts 
is going to miss cancer cell salt. I mean, sorry, Gemini cell salt and um, cancer cell salt. But he's missing those three signs. Uh, those signs, so he's going to be prone to. Uh, so Gemini would be like the lung. You see, what I'm saying, because there's two of them. Mm -hmm. These are twins. And then cancer is going to be the chest or the upper system. You see, they call it breast cancer, right? So cancer is going to be the breast, chest. You see? So those are going to be those illnesses that he tends to be prone to. Those illnesses are going to his illnesses are going to be more so upper body. Yeah. Whereas when you go into later into the zodiac, like the Scorpio, the Gonads, and then you go into the Sagittarius, the thigh. So they call them the centaur with the bow and arrow, half horse, half man. You see. Capricorn's the bone, the skeletal system, Aries. I mean, Aquarius is the you know, veins and arteries and the, the shins and the ankles. And the Pisces is the feet, you see. So, um, you know, Leo's the heart. You know, you can kind of, you can go through the whole, the whole thing. Virgo's the intestines. So you can kind of see the whole spectrum. There. So everyone's going to be deficient in three of those cells. So their signs plus the two after, which makes three. So you can see whatever sign you are and then go two after, then you'll know. Uh, and I have a whole chart on the cell salts and everything. And that's part of what medical astrology encompasses. And it goes, you know, even even deeper than that, but that's kind of like a, a basic overview of uh, how to, uh, you know, basically what we could do is um, even from a standpoint of relationships, you can say, okay, every zodiac sign has a particular note, like on the piano, that it corresponds with. So, like, Capricorn really starts the year off. It's the count the calendar year, you know. But Aries is the first zodiac year sign. So it starts mm -hmm. the year off. So Aries will be the, the note C, middle C on the piano. But when we speak in alphabets, we say A is the first letter of the alphabet. So you can use A, so you know A is gonna be Capricorn, because Capricorn starts off mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. So A and then you know we'll just go with A sharp would be um, after that will be Aquarius, you see. But so we know Aries is C. So what happens is you'll take your sun sign and then your moon sign and then your ascendant sign, which they call rising sign as well. And what that does is it creates a triad. Okay. So you would play those three notes. And you would take the person who you're dating or in a relationship with or married, and you would play his or her three notes as well, which would be six notes all together. And if you hear it, if it resonates in harmony, it makes it, it means that your relationship would be a little bit easier. Oh. So we know all this be a struggle. It'll be a little bit easier, more harmonious, you see, than, um, or in other words, you'll have, you know, greater favor because those six notes create more harmony. So you can kind of see your compatibility. So that's the way of using uh, astrology, uh, the way of seeing someone's compatibility with each other. So everyone's carrying around these six main notes, or three main notes, and the other one person has three main notes, and those like six notes. So um, that's the way, instead of reading the article and just play yeah. her three notes and his three notes, and you'll see, does that make, does that make, does that sound good? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you'll know. So we resonate with these vibrations because everything's based off color and vibration and everything. So I know these words are very cliche, but we do them today. We even, you know, women, women put makeup and they put uh, blue underneath the eyes and everything like that, because blue resonates with the liver mm -hmm. and kidneys, you see. So these are coming from ancient practices. You can we use color therapy when we use makeup. The so red will help with the lung. So things like that would um, help. So we use all types of colors to stimulate certain parts of the body. So this is why certain days of the week have certain, certain colors they correspond to. Like Sunday would be mm -hmm. orange, Monday would be blue, Tuesday would be red. Wednesday would be uh, yellow, you know, Thursday would be uh, purple, Friday would be green, Saturday would be indigo. You see, so all these colors correspond. So if you're going through some financial hardship or you just feel like life is just beating you up, to make your day more auspicious, then you would put on that color or have it in your pocket or something like that, which would bring more favor to you, mm -hmm. as, a, uh, as well as bringing more harmony to the organ that it corresponds to. So we know Sunday is going to be the sun, so it's going to help with the heart and the head, you see. And yeah. then Monday, is, and so it's cancer. So it goes on and on. So those are many ways to use medical astrology and color, uh, colorology, all types of things. They're all and kind uh, of marketing uses the colors too, big time. <laughs> so, 
exactly. So yeah, yeah many understand that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of a basic overview of that. That's that's amazing. So I know you also work with your clients to to kind of implement different things to help them uh, get over illnesses and, and such. Like you had the eczema that you were able to cure yourself of, um, and also through uh, a raw vegan diet. So can you tell us more about um, how you work with your clients and um, and along with your lifestyle? Yeah, I think it would be first, it would be beneficial if he goes back into his story with yeah. the eczema and then how that led to helping the calling to help others with their illnesses. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I was played with eczema since childhood. Uh, I had what they call weeping eczema, where it would, the skin would get so dry, it would actually start to bleed by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother would have to give me oatmeal baths and all these types of things the skin and I remember asking her I said mother why did God make me this way so um, I decided to um, well I was taking the, the they call the hydrocortisone cream uh, you would put that on the rashes and it would alleviate the scratching and it would help the rashes go away uh, you know so it was just a very visible illness you see and um, which taught me to be more hygienic and take care of myself in that way. But it wasn't until later on where I decided that uh, I didn't want to use any type of steroid creams or anything like that. Uh, come to find out later on that it, the steroid creams are very, very tough on your adrenal glands and kidneys. So I didn't want to go that route anymore. I wanted to find something more natural. So even though I went to school for, uh, for engineering, architecture engineering and applied physics, it wasn't until my second semester of architecture engineering school that um, I actually got uh, had actually had to uh, take a semester off. My financial aid did not come through, and so during this time, even though I was in school for two weeks at the time of that semester, they called me within two weeks. Uh, that, that second week, they called me and said, "You know, your financial aid didn't come through." Now this is in Missouri, and my parents all right, dropped me off and everything. I was, I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is about 10 hours away from uh, Rolla, Missouri. So uh, I decided to stay in Missouri, but luckily my friends had a, a home, which we all kind of stayed in, because I couldn't stay on campus anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for some, for some odd reason, I decided whenever something happened to me in life, I had to respond to something else. I don't know what it is. I used to call myself the comeback kid. <laughs> so <if somebody laughs> come, I had to come back with stuff. So um, this is when I decided to, uh, when I actually I moved in with my roommate, we had like a, it was like a five or six bedroom house. It was a big house that we all kind of chipped the rent off and paid part of it. And uh, so I decided to come home and throw away all my meat and all the dairy for some, some odd reason. Because I was, you know, trying to figure out. Because I had none of the time. They were going to class and school. I'm sitting here, you know, and I got a job up the street at Goodies Retail Clothing Store. I used to walk to work every day and everything. But I had none of the time to work and think. So I threw away all the meat and dairy, and, with, and within one week, my eczema went away completely. Wow. I was like, man. Now you would think that I was excited, which I was, but I was also a little perplexed as well, and kind of like. How come they never told me this? It was just this simple. I've been taking this cortisone cream for years, you know. Mm -hmm. Here I am in college now, you know, and um, and I'm finally figuring this out. So my friends uh, were asking me, "How long are you gonna keep this up?" I said, well, "I plan on keeping it up forever." And I told them, and so uh, I did lose a lot of weight initially because I was trying to figure out, you know. <laughs> What to eat? So <laughs> my mother's like, "You look rock around, looking like uh, Gandhi out here." <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so I, you know, I, I found that my my vision was getting, my eyesight was clear, my hearing was more sensitive, uh, skin had cleared up. It was great, but I was just gonna keep at it because I wanted to keep this up. So I would go to Walmart and find some. Uh, some lettuce and I would get some chickpeas and some broccoli 
and I would make a salad dressing out of the, you know, olive oil, and I would get like a Tupperware. And because the broccoli is so hard, I would just shake it with the olive oil, keep on shaking it, and it would make the broccoli a lot softer. And that's how I would eat. I would eat that every day with some tomatoes and uh, until I had time. That, 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 that bought me time to figure out how to get more, you know, mm-hmm. savvy. Yeah. yeah. So I kept it up, and that was over 10 years ago. Wow. So I have turned, you know, back since. And one thing led to another. I mean, I, you know, I finished school, but I still worked in corporate America. I worked at a nuclear engineering plant for five years in Tennessee. Tennessee Valley Authority. Uh, so I did that for five years. So, but um, even when I was working there, I was, you know, I was going to my cubicle and read about health mm-hmm. and uh, coming into work. But you know, you're working on a on a construction site, a nuclear site. So we're building a nuclear plant, and you're coming in, you're dressing, starting to change a little bit. You know, I'm coming in with crystals, and dashikis, you know. <laughs> 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 like, what's this guy doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, any chance I would get, I would um, any chance I would get, I would, I would try to study. You know, because checking into a nuclear plant is like checking into an airport every day. So you got to go to these turnstiles, you got to go to these bomb detectors. So I'm walking through with coconuts in my hand, all types of fruit, you nothing know, like you know mango. <laughs> and uh, so I'll kind of start to stick out more for short time because as my mind changed, my physicality changed. And uh, and people would ask me every day, you know, what are you eating today? You know, what are you, what you got over there? Because they would always be curious about yeah. what I would have. You know what I mean? And I would start to share some, stuff, you know, with them. And they were open, you know, they didn't give me too much. They would, you know, make little fun jokes, but they didn't mean we're experimenting at work. So we just laughed off. And, uh, but they were curious too, you know. And uh, my brother went to, uh, I went to Morehouse as well. I mean, my brother went to Morehouse, but he studied, um, he studied pre-med biology. And uh, man, my brother's birthday is the same date as Floyd Mayweather, February 24th, right? So I'm just trying to paint a personality for this year. Okay? <laughs> so he don't really you know, necessarily admit when something, you know, when he's not right necessarily. <laughs> he may think like that. But uh, we had a discussion on health and uh, he kind of, you know, because he came from a traditional background of, uh, you know, biology whatever and like i said i was studying health and he said some things about health and you know we kind of tweak what we're you know what we're saying and long story short is um i guess you could say i had to kind of realign the thinking and kind of make it more you know understanding for him and um and he's like you know it came back to me the next day he said you know what you're absolutely right now that's a big deal coming from my brother right mm-hmm. now, that's a big deal you know <laughs> So, um, so it was my family it, and the friends that kind of pushed me to get certified as a natural uh, holistic practitioner. So, um, and I pushed it off. I wasn't trying to do it. I pushed it off for about four or five years. I wouldn't. I was just working engineering and do my own thing and tutoring. You know, I was sick and cactus tutoring on, on the side, and um, you know, I wasn't really trying to do any of this stuff. I was just. I like study about it you know and I, I found that it helped me so I wanted to mm-hmm. anytime I'm doing something for my like for myself I'm really doing it for someone else mm-hmm. so I'm studying but I, have, I use my body I always tell my mother I, I use my body as a laboratory I know it sounds crazy <laughs> but I have to show that it works you see I'm not right. going to read it I can, and um I know I'm rambling I don't want to go no, on too much. <laughs> go. <laughs> no you're good yeah, so I think that's awesome yeah, so that's um, so basically like you know four or five years down the line, I finally decided to go ahead and uh, take a series of tests, twelve different tests I took, and um, it was under the International Board of African Healers Association, and it's the Healing Society, which is the headquarters is in uh, Ghana, West Africa. So, uh, so I took the test, got certified, uh, and decided to just kind of just keep it away. I, didn't, I still wasn't really doing much with it, you know. People ask me, ask me questions. I would, you know, help whoever you know, had questions. But it's like when you first get into this, you really do want to help a lot of people, but then you kind mm-hmm. of see people are still kind of stuck in this uh, carcinogenic field that they think is going to save their life. But you want to 
natural solution to a, something that you cause that's unnatural. So it doesn't really make sense. It's kind right. of contradictory. You know? um, so uh, you're trying to solve a conflict with another conflict. <laughs> and it's like the side effects are really just a, a euphemism for poisonous effects. So if anything has a side effect, it's truly not healing you because mm -hmm. something is either good for you or bad for you. It's no in between. No in between. It's, it's, if it's, if you're taking it, it has to be. It can't be both. It can't be good for you and bad. <laughs> right. So these little things are here just didn't make any sense for me. So, uh, but yeah, people started, you know, ask me questions, and I decided to, you know, decided to uh, after the project was over, decided to uh, kind of branch out a little bit. I was still doing little jobs here. I worked for the Urban League of Chattanooga, doing some engineering work and projects and stuff with them too. But, Slowly but surely, I was starting to pull out. You kind of see the transformation. Yeah. You would, you know, you would see me grow my hair out. You would see, you know, me wearing African clothing all the time and all types of things. But uh, that was part of the transformation. So that transformation process took, you know, ten years, and I'm, you know, we were still a constant transformation even to today. But you can really see me starting to, uh, you know, spread my wings more with it. Uh, that's how Dr. Tao came about. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, interesting story. Still, a story is going on today, as you see, uh, trying to uh, make it more palatable and attractive because there's a, you know, uh, people associate healthy food with bland or not mm -hmm. good or just nasty, you know. So, so is know, that how your work. restaurant came about? Is by yeah. um, creating those foods yeah. in a more appealing <laughs> manner? Exactly. exactly. Um, yeah. So it's basically just trying to make it more practical, livable, livable and sustainable. Yeah. I found that people don't necessarily not want healthy food. I think mean, the accessibility of it can make it tough. I think I don't think most people want to destroy their health. I think. Right. I think it's a series of things. I think one, the food that they eat, they're acclimated to it, so they're familiar with the look of it, the smell, and it reminds them of a family member. You know, mm -hmm. your grandmother makes them. So macaroni and cheese is not just macaroni and cheese. That's your grandmother. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's a, it's a it's an emotional, sentimental thing. To the taste, of course, and then you know it's the familiarity of it. So, uh, but once people start to see that these. Uh, these things are not necessarily in our best interest. It's not holistic, right? Because yeah. if, someone, if someone looks good to you and all they do is look good, but they're not good for your mental health and everything, then you know that's not a holistic relationship. So the same is true with our food. If it just tastes good and it does nothing else for you, it's bad for your health, then we're not pursuing that from a holistic perspective. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that's what we call a holistic science, just to be holy good, but you can't have a poison in a, in a medicine in one, it doesn't make sense. So uh, if, a, if you add a poison with another poison, then it, those poisons multiply each other, which makes it twice as poison, you see, and then, so anytime you eat something that's a carcinogen or a pill, you're only gonna get, if it's one, you could potentially get all the nutrients from it, if it's mm -hmm. nutrition. But if, you, if it's two, then it's going to be only 50% nutrition. And then if it's three, it's only going to be 12.5% nutrition at maximum. That's if the person has a perfect metabolism. You see. But if it's, if, it's, um, if it's something that's bad for you, those, those bad effects get multiplied out. You see? Yeah. So if it's, um, but if it's good for you, then you're not going to have any side effects. Mm -hmm. so, but they do a lot of little games with these. So if the society can't lie to you with words, they'll lie to you with numbers. Mm -hmm. So they may say like, milk is 2% fat or 2% milk or whatever, but 2%, if you do the whole math, you got to do 2% of the calories, the total calories, which would actually take you back to 50% fat. So 2% fat milk is 50% fat. You yeah. get the whole math, poison out, you see. So they know they can bank on people's ignorance of mathematics. Because they can't deceive you with words anymore, because you can read. So you're too literate for that. So they got to go off into now. So they can kind of deceive you with, you know, two percent or non-fat milk, which is actually, you know, fifty percent mm -hmm. fat. So 
things like that, basically. So how did you get to, I imagine when you started out, when you got rid of the meat and dairy, did you just dive into raw vegan or did you start to find your way and decided the more you learned about food, food being medicine and how that was for your body that you decided to stick with a raw vegan diet? Yeah, so I, I did jump right into raw. Now I did, <laughs> I did go cook, you know, but I've always been more strictly mostly raw. Now I did go cook for a while, you know, but um, even when I first started, I went raw for months. You know, I was just doing a little broccoli salad I was making, whatever, and I was just eating that every day. Um, but I felt so great that any other type of sacrifice was not worth it. You know, it, yeah. it just wasn't worth it. So, but um, you know, I kind of after a while, I kind of you know branched out because I wanted to taste things I had not tasted before, but I wanted to taste in a healthier way. So I would go to the PF chains and try to get like little vegan items I had there. And then I would go to uh, Subway and get like a veggie sub and things mm-hmm. like that for a while. Kind of get my footing right again. Kind of be in society, you know what I mean? I was already just doing my own thing. So I really wanted to, they, my friends at the Subway, I wanted to come to the Subway too, but I wanted to make sure I could make it healthy. You know? yeah. so if we went to PF chains, I can eat I could find something on the menu. So now I'm, I can go anywhere now and find something on the menu. Like I have confidence that I can find anything or even ask. And usually most places are pretty accommodating. They can put this together. And me knowing, you know, I call it culinary alchemy, I can almost tell them what to put together and it'll come out really good, you know. So, um, but I've always been mostly raw. Even today, I'm uh, about 90, 95% raw. I, I may touch on some Ethiopian food here and there, mm-hmm. a few little uh, cook items, but uh, I just say I supplement with cooked food. So the majority of my uh, my diet is uh, unprocessed and the way that it's uh, created for it. But most people can't really jump into it like that. It's not, and I'm not saying from a mental standpoint. I'm saying from a health standpoint, mm-hmm. uh, the liver has the liver has to uh, be rebuilt. You know, so I don't always recommend someone to jump right into a raw food diet because the liver can't take that type of tax. So it, it is an ideal way, um, but there's levels to this thing. You know, you can do a, it's um, you start to see that as levels like people go into, you know, fruitarian, liquidarian, breatharian, all these types of things. So it's, the main thing is just to get these cells to, you know, you have this thing called, uh, they call it the Fibonacci sequence, I guess they call it, where you have, um, the masculine cell goes eight spins to the right, and the feminine cell goes five spins to the left. And these cells, I'm just kind of making it more understandable here. So these cells have to rub together, and that rubbing creates energy. Mm-hmm. So that's all you're trying to do, whether you do it with breatharian, fruitarian, whatever you're doing, you're trying to get these two cells to rub in opposite directions to mm-hmm. create period. And one of the most amazing fruits that does that is the lemon, because the lemon actually goes the opposite direction. You see, so lemon can turn that being the other way which creates so much energy so that's what people put lemon in the water and stuff like that so um but that's the main goal so nature has this spin which you call uh like a, your hair grows metallic they call it our uh, the spin you always see the, the ratio with 1.618 which is perfect ratio everything trying to develop and grow out of societies use all types of uh, ways of measuring uh, using observation. So like the Great Pyramids, they would use uh, the sun goes from uh, winter and then it goes up to spring. And the longest day is uh, like spring, summer around that time. Mm -hmm. And then it goes uh, fall, right? And then it goes back to winter. So that pyramidal shape is just an observation of the sun's traveling. And that's why our answer is that, oh, okay, we're going to make a pyramid to mimic the motion of the sun. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these, um, a lot of these uh, scientific fa- findings or whatever you want to call it, are really not even scientific, it's just observation, you know. So that's why people say astrology is not a science, which you can argue that uh, astrology is an observation, which are kind of one and the same, you know. You're not really mm-hmm. uh, manipulating stars, you're just observing them. You see. So... But our ancestors knew about 
they knew about the nucleus and the electrons, things like that already, but there was no need to call them that. They, instead, they just wanted to call them the sun, we'll just call this a planet, and we'll call it the galaxy. So the same proportional dis dis distance between the sun and a planet is the same proportional di difference between the nucleus and the electron. So our answer is to say, as above, so below. So what the chemist sees in the microscope is the same thing you see at nighttime when you look up. You see, so those stars and everything. So mm -hmm. hydrogen, helium, lithium, those things. So hydrogen would be a galaxy that has one planet going around it. So helium would be a galaxy that has two planets going around it. And lithium and so on and so on. So what we see is it's just a change of nomenclature, meaning that when something is up in the heavens or in the space, we change the name of it when it comes to the Earth. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets people confused because they don't see it. That's what they call yeah. it physics. They call it what astrophysics, same exact subject, you see. So you may call it the Milky Way galaxy in the heavens, what we call it the Nile River on the Earth. Mm -hmm. So everything you see up there, you may call it um, the Queen's Chamber in the, in the Great Pyramid, but the Queen's Chamber aligns with the Ryan's Belt, and then the King's Chamber aligns up with Series A, Series B, you see. So you just change the name. You may call it the Pegasus constellation in space, but you call it the hypothalamus in the brain so we know our hip the hippocampus i mean because hippocampus means hippo means water horse pegasus means horse right so we're just saying the same thing just changing the nomenclature so that nomenclature is what those students off in school you see because we're not we're not taught how to track information mm -hmm. see, if you can't track it that's what the doctor banks off they bank off your ignorance so they have to create a new uh vocabulary which they can use to make you feel stupid and then they can sell your product. Yeah. But if you nearly knew what the word was, and you say, okay, if this is an autoimmune disease, if you want to call it that, then all you got to do is build the immune system, right? So you just reverse whatever they're talking about. Right. You know, um, you, know you can create anti venoms by using garlic, you know, because garlic helps, you know, eliminate all infections and poison of the body. Take garlic for days, and next day take it for three days, and take it again three days, and you can get bit by the deadliest snake, and the snake won't do anything to you. The venom won't do anything because wow. garlic is a natural in fact, uh, poison killer. Wow. You know so once you understand nature, you can see that everything is already here for it. You see. They may call it series A and series B, the space, which is the Dogon people, the dog star people, and two dogs is what you call bi or bit, so a canine. You say canine bit, cannabis. Cannabis means, mm. but you see, the two dog, it comes from the two dog star system. So they may call it cannabis on the earth, but it's called the two dog star series A and series B in space. Mm. You call it plants and planets. So the plant and planet is the same word to take out the E. So we know that these plants came from other galaxies. So we call it the intergalactic confederation, meaning that there was planetary trade amongst different galaxies and planets. So these herbs and plants that are here are not indigenous to the earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, matter of fact, water is not indigenous to the earth. Wow. You see, this is why the only way that most species can even exist on the earth is by interacting with that extraterrestrial energy called water. You see. So you see these octopus and squid, you see how ethereal they look. You say that's not from here. Because you're right, because they're interacting with something that not from here, which is water. Water comes from space, not Earth. So we're extraterrestrial, but you know, so it's the thing we have to understand that the royal family itself is sitting in space, which you call the universe, and she had a son called the sun, <laughs> and then you have Saturn, who's the father, and the daughter of the Saturn is the Earth. So our purpose here is to ascend to these different galaxies and planets to raise the vibrations so that Earth can receive her crown from her father, who is Saturn, who has the rings, who is called the Lord of the rings, right? That's why we wear earrings, right? Your rings on our fingers to praise to the planet Saturn. You know, they used to call Christmas what? Saturnalia. The exchange of gifts. So we understand that Saturn is the father of Earth. So it's not Mother Earth, it's daughter Earth. Mm -hmm. and she's trying to receive her crown from her father but she can't right now because her vibration is too low because of us 
So our goal is to raise the vibration up so she can be inducted to the true or your family, which is sitting in space right now. So we understand that plants come from planets. That's why you have things like garlic and cayenne, which has a, we call it Mars cycle. It mm -hmm. grows on the Mars cycle. So Mars represents war, the strength, you see. So garlic and cayenne are very strong and pungent and spicy types of things, you see. Some of them are obvious. You may call it sunflower. It means they have the solar cycle. It grows on the solar cycle. Three. Um, so when you teach school, you have to teach on these basic principles of understanding that mathematics itself is a solar science. So whatever it is, that math should be taught at 12 o'clock noon. Because what happens is the brain is always based on rhythm. So the person is going to be more susceptible to understand mathematics if it's taught at 12 noon. See what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. a solar science. The agriculture is taught at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. because Saturday. You see, these things, all these subjects are universal. So we said we are students of the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we open up university. The word university is not an arbitrary word. We are students of the universe. We are guardians of the galaxy. You see, so the, our main goal is to understand that each planet represents a subject and understanding. So you have Jupiter, which is oceanography, but they don't teach oceanography anymore. Or zoology, they don't teach zoology anymore. They don't teach these subjects because they don't want you to be connected to the heavens and the earth. So when that does, they do that, they can sell your remedy. They can sell you something because they are killing. What they're doing is selling, selling to your ignorance. Mm -hmm. And your dollar, and your dollar is a vote. So your mm -hmm. dollar is set to be a ballot, meaning that whatever you're paying for is what you want more of. Yeah. People don't see it that way, but yeah. um, so that's that's to be, un be understood. So each subject is a planetary object and should be taught at a certain time of the day so the brain can be more receptive to understanding mm -hmm. information and students, do a lot, and students do a lot better when, they teach, when you teach them at a certain time of the day. So that's to be understood. Uh, that's why we use the word university, like I said before. And since we're so disconnected from that, then students struggle, struggle drop out of school, do all types of things because they know something's missing. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the ancients and how they used to fast and why fasting is important for the body? Okay. Yeah, so nature those do a fast automatically. Uh, fasting is um, more, so, uh, more so a relationship to the land that we're on. And um, so the word fast just means to abstain from. So we knew when the harvest was coming in strong, you want to get as much uh, crops coming in, and you would go into a fast. So, so the thing about a fast is kind of like, um, say you're on the ocean somewhere and your boat starting to sink. <laughs> you have all these things in the boat, and say theoretically, if you took these things out the boat, if you throw them out the boat, then you would stop sinking. So, you may say, okay, I'm gonna throw, you know, this, this TV out of here. I don't need it. It's not for survival. With those, you know, this, this radio hat here, I don't need this radio. So the body's doing the same thing, you know, so it's saying, okay, I'm going to throw out everything that's what, anti-life. Mm -hmm. So it's going to throw out everything that's not needed to sustain life. So fasting allows the body to get rid of the things that are hindering it from being at its highest level, optimal level, so it doesn't sink or, you know, So uh, the body is always going towards life. It only has one product. The body is not trying to sell you anything else except for life. And it does all it can to keep you alive because if it's not alive, then you're not alive. And then you know, we transition to the next dimension uh, or we go back to the dimension that we came from. But the fast uh, is how we're supposed to uh, go into these fast every solstice and equinox, uh, ideal, uh, because the body is changing its season. So um, foods can change your seasoning too. They call it seasoning because cayenne can make you hot, hotter. So the pepper family makes you hot and the mint family can make you cold mm -hmm. or cool down. So uh, we typically try to fast on all the equinoxes and sulfur because the body is changing the season. So you want to give it time to reset. So you'll, you'll find that a lot in the whole different community. But um, if we're going to eat, we want to try to eat um, in four hour, four hour increments, meaning that 
that's the same e discovery that you were in your mother's womb when the amniotic fluid changes out to every four hours. So uh, remember the baby is um, basically eating through the mother, but the baby can't breathe on its own mm -hmm. inside the mother. So, uh, but the baby is in a fourth dimensional realm. So you'll see that the baby's actually doing rapid eye movement. He's like, okay, the baby's laughing, the baby, but you know, Richard Pryor is nowhere around. So how can you be <laughs> laughing, you know, 80 percent So it, what's the baby laughing about? What's the mm -hmm. baby doing about? You? So the baby's getting downloads, um, it's getting downloads and it's from, on day 49 is when the baby's true life purpose is implanted inside the pineal gland. And from there, then the gender is determined from the baby so that person's uh, life uh, purpose can be most efficiently carried out. You see? So that's when the gender is determined, you see what I'm saying? So, um, and so from there, then the baby, uh, you know, at, at you know, the nine months is over, then the mother's water breaks. When the mother's water breaks, that means the lungs open up. And when the lungs open up, the baby forgets everything that it knew. And it descends. That's where the baby's born head first, mm -hmm. inside out from the mother and backwards, meaning that she's born into a world that's upside down, inside out and backwards. So you descend into the third dimension. So the baby knew that it was in fourth dimension. So it's, can fall off the bed easily, all types of things, because up and down, left and right, those boundaries didn't exist in that, in that dimension. So babies are very prone to getting hurt. So they have to learn how to be a body. So in other words, you don't have a soul. You are a soul mm -hmm. that has a body. You see what I'm saying? So the baby has to learn how to be a body. You see? And that's what the journey is about. And we try to bring these two together. So whereas in Western science, they may say, that two objects can occupy, occupy the same space at the same time. They call that a collision. So if two cars try to occupy the same space at the same time, they crash. But in a holistic science, they say the spirit, the mind, and the body all occupy mm -hmm. one vessel. You know what I'm saying? So that's the way we look at it. So it's a holistic understanding of that. So, um, so the fasting is going to be corresponding to how, um, if you're not going to fast, you want to be, you know, make sure you eat a meal then wait four hours every next three meal. but um fasting is ideal it's good to put yourself on a fast for at least a couple of days to kind of reset the body you know you don't want to be driving around your car with a whole bunch of check engine lights and stuff. <laughs> you know, people uh wait until they're you know 50 60 70 until they finally want to try something that god made right mm -hmm. <laughs> let me try something that you know i worship god but let me just finally try what you know what god has made so it's kind of uh Kind of ironic how you uh, pray over food, but the very food that you're praying over has nothing to do with what the guy created. It's never good enough for you. you see? Right. And it's always got to be processed. You can never deal with the creator that's given to you, but you got to fry it. You got to do everything to it to, to make it more palatable because what that means is we can't, truth is not palatable to us. You know, we need a commercial. If someone comes mm -hmm. right at you with truth, that is offensive. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You got to yeah. defend your feelings about something. So, when we can't accept nature for what it truly is, then we can't accept anything in nature for what it truly is. So we call that the amniotic highway of truth, meaning that when you eat healthy, you have an amino acid called uh, tyrosine, which creates phenylalanine. Phenylalanine creates serotonin. Serotonin creates melatonin. You see? So what happens is if those amino acids are not calibrated correctly and fired off at the right time, then truth is perceived as untruth, you see. So reality is un no longer what it truly is, it's essentially what it is. is. This is why we say we see with our brain, not with our eyes. That's why you mm -hmm. would go to the Alaska. You would ask the people who live in Alaska how many different different types of snow there is. They would say, you may say it's only you know one type of snow or two types of snow. They would say no, it's over 300, 300 different types of snow. You see, because what they're seeing is they're seeing with their brain. They think mm -hmm. you know, someone eats meat and someone doesn't eat meat. If they walk into a house with someone who's eating meat, they smell it. It doesn't smell good, but the meat it smells good. But they both have noses. Yeah. So they're per they're perceiving reality through their brain, you see. So that's why we have to understand that we see with our brain. We have sensors. We have five sensors, but one sense, which is coming through all the other senses. You call it common sense. 
it's it. So um, everything is turned into a chemical to the brain. To the brain. So your eye turns everything to a chemical. Your ear turns everything to a chemical. And that chemical is what we're addicted to. You may call it, you know, people look at, you know, all types of things on the internet. Right? They may listen to certain types of music. Those are chemicals they're addicted to, not the image itself. They mm-hmm. like the chemicals created. The same as with food, just for they like the chemical that it created. So junk food diet for children actually creates an alcohol in the brain. Mm-hmm. So children who go to school can't sit down and feel because their brain is in a stupor and it actually makes them madly drunk because the fermentation is caught in the gut from the Cheetos and the flaming Hot uh, food and everything and the Funyuns and Gummy Bears and Skittles and m and Snickers. All these types of things are going to the brain which causes it to be in an alcoholic state. You see. So um, they can't control themselves. You tell them to sit still, they can't sit still. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times people who have a hot temper has nothing to do with with their personality has something to do with the liver. Sure. But the liver and the brain work in opposite. So whatever is bitter to the tongue is sweet to the liver. And what's sweet to the tongue is bitter to the liver. Now we have a certain word in the English language called bilibus. Bilibus means a hot head, right? But in chemistry, we may say bilirubin or bilinagin, mm-hmm. which talks about the liver, right? So we know bili means represents the liver. So we say someone who is a hot head is bilibus, meaning that they have something going on in the liver. So a hot temper is caused by a toxic liver, you see what I'm saying? And liver comes from the Greek mythology story. They call her Hepa. Hepa is the one who gave life, who is the one who helps people live, liver. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Liver, you see what I'm saying? So anytime our, when a disease like the liver, you call her the name Hepa again. You see Hepa, hepatitis. Hepatitis A, hepatitis B, because yeah. that's Greek mythology. You see what I'm saying? So everything is based off a delivery system, a cultural reference, and a nomenclature which connects you to a certain time of history, which is what they call education, which is trying to put information back into you, which really trying to draw stuff out. So it's all, like I said before, it's all connected. <laughs> That's incredible. Like I, it, when you were first talking, like when we were introducing you and I was asking about your background and you said it's all connected, I was like, uh, I don't know. But having this conversation and actually hearing everything, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm following the connection now. I, I see what you were talking about. It truly is all connected. And I love how you kind of Painted brought that, that brown circle. Yeah, back for all of our listeners. That's amazing. Um, and Dr. Tao has been incredible on your talking to you tonight. And I have absolutely loved everything that we've gotten to discuss and I'm sure that our listeners have as well. So can you please tell them how they can find you, reach out to you and hear more of your information? All right. So I just got the website up last week. So it's doctor, but it's doctor spelled out. So it's Dr. Tao, uh, T-A-U.com, the website. I have things you can get on there, some herbal formulas and things like that. Um, I'm on Instagram, Dr. Tao Tim Quelly. Um, also on TikTok, which is probably the most prominent right now. Uh, I post on there every day. So TikTok, just my name again, uh, Tao Kamisi Tim Quelly. I think it's just Tao. It may be Tao Kamisi or Tao Quelly, one of those two. And then Facebook. And then my email, if you want to email me personally, uh, TKMKWELI at gmail.com for that tkm quelly tkmk w e l i at gmail.com that's my personal email if you have any questions about uh, what we talked about today or just curious about uh, any type of health concern and i'll try my best to address it <laughs> that's awesome we'll be sure to include all of your information in the show notes as well so all of our listeners are able to go on and get connected with you And thank you again for your time. And uh, we've had a wonderful conversation. Appreciate it. Also, the the restaurant is called Juamoto. I'm sorry, I didn't remember. Yes, no, yes, definitely. Can't forget that. (laughs) Yeah. And you're located in Concord, right? Correct, downtown Concord on Union Street. So called Juamoto, Sunfire Cuisine. Juamoto is a key Swahili word, which means sunfire, which means we say that food is cooked by the sun itself. 
time that it takes to grow an apple or a grape that is the cooking process. There was only one chef, one oven on the planet, and that's the sun itself. So uh, all we do here is manipulate it and make uh, appetizers for you to enjoy. So yeah, Jewel Moto Sun Fire Cuisine in downtown Concord, so you can make uh, this lifestyle more sustainable for yourself. Awesome. Guys, be sure to check them out.